Okay, so today we're going to do a little demonstration with hydrogen gas. We've been talking in this class about how in the history of science, when they were trying to figure out atomic theory and figure out what evidence there is for it, how gases played a very large role there because if you have a gas at the same volume, temperature, and pressure, then you have the same number of particles. So it gives you a way to weigh that gas and figure out how much gas uh, you have in terms of the number of atoms. Now the method that we're going to use here to generate some hydrogen was first used by Henry Cavendish in 1766. Um, he used the method that was uh, pioneered by Joseph Black, uh, who used carbonates and acid. He generated what he called, quote, fixed air, uh, because it didn't allow combustion. Turns out that was carbon dioxide. When you put carbonates into an acid, it produces um, carbon dioxide. When you put a metal, as uh, Mr. Cavendish did, such as zinc, which I'm using here, into an acid, such as hydrochloric acid, uh, 6 molar. This is very dangerous stuff, so please don't try this at home. That has to go into every video. Uh. Alright, um, so what I'm using is 6 molar hydrochloric acid and zinc to generate hydrogen gas. Now what I'm going to do is generate it in uh, these glass flasks by downward displacement of water. Hydrogen, of course, is much lighter than air because it's very low density. It's the least dense element in the universe. Uh, and what you do is you fill up one of these flasks, turn it upside down, and submerge it because if this, uh, if you risked having the hydrogen mixed with air, it would it would form a um, an explosive mixture, uh, which is not a good thing if you're working in a glass vessel. So we're going to make sure there's no air in there, um, and I'm going to use this one here actually. And the way we do this is just add a little hydrochloric acid to the apparatus. There's some water in the bottom of this flask so that we can make sure that this only goes one way. It doesn't come spurting back up out of here. And actually, if the cameraman would come right over here, you can see the bubbles. I have to let the bubbles come out for about 30 seconds. in order to flush the air out of the apparatus, because of course the apparatus is completely full of air. We want to have no air involved here. Okay, so now we have a full flask of hydrogen. We've turned out the light so that we can see what's going on a little better. I have a lit candle here. Woo, that was exciting. That wasn't supposed to happen that way. But I bet you, we still have a flame here. No? Why did this work so perfectly when I was not videotaping it? No one used to. Obviously, we're gonna we're gonna kill this one. Oh God! <laughs> All right, so now we have a flask full of hydrogen gas. I'm gonna bring this flame near to it. It's gonna do that, and you can see that the hydrogen gas is not flammable, but, or at least it doesn't allow the candle to burn, but. It is, in fact, flammable because if you can see it just barely, let me zoom in on that, there is a flame right at the very lip of this. The hydrogen puts out the flame because there's no oxygen in there. Oxygen is required for combustion. But the hydrogen is, in fact, burning and can relight the candle. And then it'll continue to burn until all the hydrogen is gone. It'll burn right at the mouth there because the only place it has access to oxygen is right at the very bottom. And that's it, hydrogen gas.